You're watching the Google Pixel 5a disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Now heat needs to be applied to the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the screen off. Now the screen can be lifted up towards the left side, at which point there's a metal bracket over here covering the connector for the screen, as well as a T4 screw over here or a torque screw, which is holding that metal bracket down that needs to be removed. Once that bracket or cover is removed, we can disconnect the screen cable. So taking a look at the screen, there's a plastic frame bordering it, which has multiple clips around it to ensure a secure seal. There's also, of course, the adhesive water resistant seal around it. And if you were to get a replacement screen which didn't come with this plastic border around it, this plastic border is just held down with some adhesive to the screen. So all you have to do is apply heat and pry it off and reapply it with new adhesive to your replacement screen. There's a large graphene film over here which needs to be peeled off. And the graphene film basically helps transfer heat. There is another plastic cover over here which needs to be removed. Once the plastic cover is removed and this protective tape is peeled back, there are two hidden T4 screws. There are 10 T4 screws which need to be removed. When you're removing the screws, keep a track of which screw goes where, since some of the screws are in different lengths. Now that the screws are removed, we can remove the metal bracket or cover over the charger port. Now the metal cover over the motherboard can be removed. There's also a small plastic bracket which goes over here in the corner. On this metal cover, there's a flex cable over here with a notification LED on top. On the other side, we can see the connector for that flex cable over here, these two gold contacts, which make contact with the two points on the motherboard, giving it signal. There is also a vibrator motor over here on the bottom corner. At this point, we have access to disconnecting the flex cable for the battery. There are two adhesive pull tabs provided to pry the battery off. One is located over here on top and one over here on the bottom. The bottom one doesn't happen to be a pull tab, just some protective tape. And I guess in general the pull tab is pretty useless since it tears when you try to pull it. So instead we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry off. Here's a better look at the battery. The 12.2 megapixel dual pixel and 16 megapixel ultra wide lens can be disconnected by just popping off the connectors. Here's a better look at those cameras. We can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. The headphone jack cable can be disconnected and removed. There is also a liquid damage indicator which is this white sticker on the headphone jack. There are three more T4 screws which need to be removed. And then finally the motherboard can be lifted up and removed. There is another plastic bracket over here, which goes on the corner by the speaker assembly. So when you're reassembling it, don't forget to put that piece in. So taking a look at the motherboard, we have the SIM card reader located right over here. There's copper tape over here on top of the shield. The proximity sensor is located over here on top. And the primary microphone is located over here on the bottom. The charger port is soldered onto the board, so making repairs on the charger port would be difficult. There's also a red rubber gasket around the charger port. There's also another liquid damage indicator located right next to the primary microphone, which is that white sticker. There's a white coaxial cable connecting the speaker assembly to the bottom of the motherboard, which we're going to disconnect right now. And that can be disconnected by just popping it off. Once the shields on this side are removed, there are some rubberized thermal pads or thermal paste on top of the processor, RAM, and the chip over here. 
Here's a better look at it with the thermal pads removed. On the back side of the motherboard, we can see more copper tape on top of this shield over here. There's also a coaxial cable running over it. And the front facing camera connector is over here and there's a protective tape over here covering it. That can be disconnected by just peeling off the tape and popping off the connector. Once the bottom shield is removed and the copper tape is peeled back, we can see some more thermal pads over here on top of these chips. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is over here and is routed along the edges over here. There's a metal bracket over here holding them in place which can be slid up and removed. The fingerprint reader is located right over here and the flex cable is routed underneath this flex cable and it comes over here. The flex cable for the camera flash is located right over here and it's routed underneath this metal cover which is held down with two T4 screws. Once that metal cover is removed you can lift up and remove that flex cable. The earpiece speaker is located here on top at an angle and it's held down with adhesive so if you wanted to replace that you just have to gently pry it off. Also once I remove the battery I noticed there are two more pull tabs over here underneath on the bottom portion of the battery which are somewhat hidden. But in reality, these pull tabs are terrible because they easily tear when you try to pull it off. So applying isopropyl alcohol made it much easier to pry the battery off. There's more graphene film over here covering the NFC antenna. And there's a water resistant mesh filter over here for the microphone opening. Here's a better look at the speaker assembly. There's a water resistant mesh filter over here covering the opening. And underneath this white sticker over here, there are the small white foam balls. Those help the speaker sound louder. Once the graphite film is peeled back, we can see the cutout or opening in the housing where the NFC antenna is. Now I don't know why they didn't include wireless charging on this phone since they already did a cutout for the NFC antenna. They could have just made it larger and added a wireless charging coil. As far as repairability goes, I give this phone a 5 out of 10. The screen replacement will be easy, but aside from that, it'll be more difficult to replace other parts. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your screen. Power it on and you're done. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.